I'd like to pass out pieces of paper and you'll understand why as we go along. So I'll pass out some on this side. Please take one, pass it down. And then um, can I have someone please turn off the lights? There's a, a short presentation. So we have some visuals. Okay. Great. Good. Oh, oh, nice. oh, wow. okay. That's perfect. Yes. Thank you. So, um, as our Madam Toastmaster said, I'll be sharing with you the affection of letters. So my name is Chow, like Chow Ming, <laughs> and I'd like to share with you tonight three reading cards and one love letter. You might, you might be asking yourself, well, what can we learn from reading cards, Chow? What can we learn about you? Well, I'm sharing these greeting cards for three reasons. Foremost, these greeting cards will tell you about the friends I keep. And if you're familiar with the saying, I can tell you who you are by the friends you keep, then it kind of might make sense. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll be introducing you to some of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, I want you to invite you to think about feelings you get when you have a thoughtful handwritten letter sent to you. Or a greeting card that can somehow encourage you to grow. Receiving a handwritten letter can be a novelty these days, since you know we get those text messages, you know, bringing in your bag or something, or that email about I don't know what happened yesterday or the other day. These things are special, but what about a handwritten letter? And so I want to ask you, when was the last time you wrote one? Mm -hmm. Lastly, the love letter. Now, this is what really grounds me when I lose my way. And this last one is a hefty one if you've ever received one, right? <laughs> and you might be asking yourself, oh, gee, Chow, that's kind of personal. You really want to share that in your icebreaker? Why not, right? <laughs> really, it's just the tip of the iceberg because tomorrow is another day and who knows what will happen then. So let me go ahead and begin and show you the first card. This one has a burst of sunshine. A good friend of mine sent it to me, or didn't send it to me, but basically I was leaving to teach for China. And this was probably springtime. My birthday was in January. We drove up to a parking lot in Anaheim. If you've ever seen you know, the, the hockey center, the Honda center, this is where we were. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing here? He carpools to work with friends. Good soul, carpooler. <laughs> and so he gives me this card, and I'm just like, oh, thank you. But you know, my birthday was a while ago. Oh, it's OK. I just wanted to let you know I remembered. Sweetheart, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I met him when we were in university together. We tutored students in Oakland on Saturday mornings. And also what kept us um, linked was our love for literature, our love for art, and also our love for teaching. He's currently right now doing curriculum development, a PhD over at Irvine. And I'm going to see him next week, so I'm very excited. Good. <laughs> um, but this is the card that he gave me. And let me read to you what it says on the inside. Never hide your dreams. Open them to sunshine and watch them grow. This is the second card from a dear, dear friend of mine, also from college. She's from San Diego and I'm from Pomona. We had, would have probably never met had we not gone to college together. The first year in school, we were at the, it's, it's a long acronym, the Recruitment, re, recruitment and Retention of Education for Asian American um, Pacific Islanders considering higher education. <laughs> For sure, we just said reach. Ah. reach. <laughs> so we exactly. So we would see each other then, and you know, years passed by. And when we saw each other again was actually not until the fourth year in school when we took an Asian American literature class together. And in this class, we read literature from modern Asian American writers. And the difference between it is that sometimes we have maybe other people writing about Asian Americans. But it's very different when you have someone who is Asian American to write these stories. So we shared our family histories and ideas. And what connected us there was we're both Vietnamese women. And we talked about our filial duties to our family. And also I shared with her kind of the guilt I felt about going far away from school 
or going away for school, <laughs> far away, you know, and not being able to be there for my family. But then we were able to connect and later on when we went back to uh, Southern California to continue our careers and all, she sent me this for my birthday because we went to the Deer Park Monastery and prayed and thought about meditation or breath. And so for this one it says, because you're alive, everything is possible. And the person who said this was the Venerable Zen Master, Thich Nhat Hanh. And it's true, because every day you breathe, you are alive. So, what is this? It's a love letter, but it's not what you think. <laughs> it's not hot, it's not juicy, but it was written with love in mind. <laughs> My junior high school grade school's teacher gave us a personal journal entry to write. She gave us a paper and asked us to fill it up. She said, fill in the blanks of how to accomplish your goal. So, when I was in the sixth grade, I wanted to be a businesswoman, a doctor. And not much has changed, except when I went to college, I studied not the practice of medicine, but the practice of art. Okay. And, and what got me going was, you must want something so badly that you will not change or stop to work for this. And that's what I'm doing. So one day, in a year and a half or so, I'll be a teacher and then afterwards, public administrator. But I need very good speaking skills for this. That's why I'm here. So that is my icebreaker. Thank you so much. And please remember, oh, one last thing, Marcel Prost. Let us be grateful to those who make us happy. So I leave it to you to let someone know that you're grateful for them. Thanks. Wonderful.